Within your life or your business, I'm sure you've got a load of information and a load of different documents. What if you could get AI to go through those documents, pull out the important information and give it to you in a nice format, which you could use in a database or really pass into anywhere else that you want to. I'm going to show you exactly how we can do that. So we're going to today create this very, very simple web application where we can upload any PDF or any file that we want to, and we can turn it into structured data. In this example, I'm going to upload this invoice and it's going to pull out some of the important bits of information. So I've uploaded it here, I'm going to click go, give it a couple of seconds, and this is running a N810 automation. And there we go, we've got the invoice amount, the invoice number, and this is running from an N810 automation. So we are building the front end on Bubble and the back end is going to be on N810. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can build this and also why we're building part on Bubble and part on N810. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are within N810. We have got a brand new workflow. If you don't have an N810 account, then go ahead and create one. You can get a free one and a free trial and create a workflow. So the first thing that we're going to do is add our trigger, which is going to be a webhook. We'll put that in there and we're going to change the method from a get to a post. And then what we're going to do is we are going to copy the URL. We don't need to add any uh, authentication. We're not going to do this in this tutorial, but if you were doing this in production, you would add authentication to it. So here we have a new bubble project, absolutely blank. We're going to go into plugins. You want to make sure you've got the API connector plugin installed. Uh, if not, you just go add plugin and find it there. We will add a new API. We're going to call this one NA10. And I am going to expand this one here and call this um, extract from PDF. We're going to change it from data to action. And we're going to change it from get to posts. And we're going to paste in that URL which we copied. Okay, and before we test it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a parameter. I'm going to change the body type from JSON to form data, which will then allow me to send a file and I can make this non-private. So for this tutorial, this is the file that I am going to pass in. As you can see, it is a test invoice of a thousand euros. Uh, these are not my real bank details here. Um, and this is just going to extract a few things from this PDF. But again, you could pass in any PDF, any document that you want into this and change a few of the attributes and you can get whatever data you want from it. So I'm going to upload that file here and then I'm going to call it file. Okay, now I think we're just about ready to test it. So we can say, listen for test event. Uh, we can see that's listening. We're going to go back over to Bubble and we're going to go initialize call. Uh, there we go. Uh, workflow was started. Great. That's showing that it's working. We can go back over to NA10 and we can see that we've got our file here. So that's now working and we can carry on in the workflow. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to go to extract from file and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go for extract from PDF because it's a PDF we're uploading. And all we need to change here is uh, change it from data to file and that is because on bubble we called this parameter file rather than um, anything else right rather than data we called it file you can name whatever you want it's going to work fine if we then test the step we should then be able to see that all of the information from that invoice or the text is then pulled through into this text field here which is great it's extracting that information from the pdf so we're going to save that before we continue, let me just say that AI is moving super, super fast these days. It is my job to keep up with AI, and especially when it comes to using AI to build a more profitable business. And if you want occasional updates from me about any of the new things that come out in the world of AI to help you build a more profitable business, then there is a link in the description where you can sign up for those occasional updates from me. Anyway, back to the video. And the next step that we're going to do is if we go extract and we want a information extractor, so in the information extractor, what we're going to do here is we're going to pass in this text, which is the text that we pulled from the PDF, and we're going to put it into the information extractor. So if we go expression on this text field here, and then we just drag in text, put it in there, and there we go. And now what we're going to do is specify which attributes we want to pull out of that PDF. So I'm going to pull three things out. I'm going to pull out first the uh, invoice, oops, invoice, oh, I can't type today, invoice number, there we go. And this here in the description is where we say what it is. And this is very, very simple in this case. And we're going to say the invoice number. And you'll see in a second, we can make it a little bit more complicated. Uh, and the type is going to be string. We're not going to make it a number as sometimes invoice numbers can include letters. So we're going to keep it a string so we can have both numbers and letters in there. We are going to make it required. We're going to add another one. And this is going to be total invoice amount. And this is going to be a number because that's always going to come back as a number. And the description in here is going to be the total invoice amount. Again, very simple. And we're going to make this required. And we're going to add one more attribute, which is going to be invoice currency. 
Now, this is where we can add a little bit of a more complicated description in here. Uh, again, really not that complicated in the vast scheme of things, but we can see here what's going to happen. So we can type in here um, the three letter code that denotes the currency of the uh, total invoice amount. And you can see here that this is where it's using a little bit of intelligence because it's not just going to give us the currency, but we're saying what format we want it in. We want that three letter code. So whether that's USD or GBP or EUR, whatever's on that invoice, we're gonna have that passed back in. So you can see here, we're doing a little bit of formatting and you can really make these descriptions as in depth as you want. So now we are going to test this and hopefully, okay, so we get an error because we haven't actually attached a model to this yet. So we need to add an AI model. So if we go to model, I'm going to use OpenAI. You can really use anything. This is not particularly complicated what we're doing, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. You're going to get basically the same. Um, you will need to add in credentials. I already have an OpenAI account included on this NA10 account. But if you don't, you can click on create new credentials, then go to platform.openai.com, create an API key, and drop it in here, and you'll be good to go. Uh, yep, close. Okay, and then if we click on test step, we should get a response. So here you can actually see what's quite interesting is um, this is the prompt that we're passing into the model in order to get a response. And you can see here, this is the invoice. And this is the output. And you can see here that we do have our invoice number and our total amount is cut off, but we'll, uh, we'll see that in just a second. So in order to get this working, we need one more thing. And that is a response from our webhook. So we're gonna go webhook and we're gonna say respond to webhook. And we're gonna leave this just as first uh, incoming item because we can see we've already got our output there. Uh, so if we go test step, then there we go. We've got our output and that is gonna be in this format here, which is JSON, which is perfect. That's just what we want um, when we are using it within Bubble. So if we come back, we need to do one thing before this will work and that is on our webhook, um, you'll see that it says uh, respond immediately and we want to change this. And we want to say using respond to webhook node. Um, and that is going to work. So if we save that, we can then uh, test workflow. And then we're gonna come back over to Bubble. We have still got that uh, same file in there. So if we go reinitialize, it's probably gonna take a second or two. Um, and here we go. We can see we've got our output invoice number, output uh, total invoice amount, and output invoice currency. It doesn't really matter about the labels that it's giving it, that's fine. Um, and you can see here, we've got our JSON, which is perfect. That's just what we want. So all we need to do is make one change. I'm gonna save this. Uh, now that we've got this workflow working, I'm going to make this active. And what this is saying here is we need to change the webhook URL. So we're gonna say, okay, that's fine. Come over to the webhook and this uh, is our test URL. We're now gonna select production URL. We are going to copy this, come back over to bubble and just change this out here. And now uh, we don't have to go back over to NA10 and say test, we can just call this. So it's really initialize it and it's gonna take a second or two and then it's gonna come back with the same data, which is great, that's just what we want. So now we can start building within Bubble. And actually now is probably a good time to answer the question, why am I using NA10? Why aren't I just doing everything in Bubble? Which you can do by using various APIs. And the reason for that is that when I have it in NA10, I can call it from anywhere. However, if I have it in Bubble, I could use Bubble's backend workflows APIs, but actually it's easier in NA10 to have it there. And then I can call it from whatever service that I want to. It's not just within Bubble, it's basically anywhere. NA10 hosts it and I can just call it from wherever. So that's the reason why. It's because maybe I want to use this function of extract from PDF from something else rather than Bubble. So maybe I wanna be able to use it from uh, Telegram, right? I wanna upload an invoice to Telegram or whatever data and I want it to respond back. So it just makes it a little bit more flexible. Okay, so now we're in Bubble and I am going to create a new page and I'm gonna call this one uh, Extract from uh, PDF. And this is gonna be very simple. This is not gonna be a tutorial on how to create a beautiful Bubble application. I am simply gonna make this work. Um, there's lots of other uh, tutorials out there on how to make beautiful looking Bubble applications. This is not one of them. So we are gonna change uh, this page to column layout. We are going to uh, doing a tiny little bit of styling just to make it look acceptable. Um, we are going to grab a group. We're gonna put the group in here. We are gonna make this group a maximum of um, 800 pixels wide. We're gonna put it in the middle of the page. We're gonna give um, a little bit of padding at the top or a bit of margin at the top. We're gonna to make the uh, background style a flat color and we're gonna round the corners and we're gonna give it a little bit of internal padding too. Let's give it, um, let's give it 40, 40, 40, 40. There we go. Okay, so now we can see it got a, a little holder. And within this group, I'm just gonna call this uh, content. And I'm gonna add a, another group. 
and I'm going to drag and drop that in here. I'm going to call this group input group. And as you might be able to guess, this is where we're going to have our input. So very simply, I'm going to say uh, upload the PDF, make this a little bit bigger, make it bold. Um, and I'm not going to add any more styling. I'm going to create a file input and drag that on here. Um, give that a little bit of spacing as well. File upload array is fine. You can call it something better, but we're not going to. Uh, let's drag a button in and give that a little bit of spacing. Give that 10. And we're gonna name this button um, extract. Actually, we're gonna call it go. Okay, good. Now, what I'm gonna do is on the content group, I am going to uh, add a new state, and I'm gonna call this state. And this is going to be text. And by default, this is gonna be input. And then we're going to have two others. We're going to have uh, loading and we're going to have output. And those are two other groups which we're going to create now. So if we create a group, put it down here, and we're going to call this uh, waiting group. And I'm just going to grab an icon, put it in that waiting group. I'm then going to change the icon to a loading circle if I could find it. I always struggle to find it. Okay, it took me a second, but I did find it. Uh, here it is. And I'm gonna make it rotate so we can see it's basic loading. Uh, waiting group or loading group, that's fine. And I create a new group, put this down below. I'm gonna call this one output group. Okay, then I'm gonna add some conditionals. So I am going to uh, say that we cannot see the input group on page load, but I am gonna add a conditional and say, when the content groups state is input, then we are gonna be able to see this element and I'm gonna copy this same conditional and go to the waiting group and I'm gonna paste it here. And then I'm also gonna to go to layout and turn off uh, this part here so we can't see it. And I'm gonna do the same with the output group even though we don't have anything in there, paste in that conditional and go to layout and turn that off. Uh, and now what I can do is I can go to the output group and I can just put in a title saying output, now what I'm gonna do is actually create a data type, which is gonna be an invoice. So I'm going to go over to data, um, create a new one, which is gonna be invoice. And in this invoice, we're gonna have um, file, which is of type file. We are going to have um, invoice, oh, invoice number, which is gonna be uh, text, because again, it might have a letter in it. We are going to have invoice, uh, invoice amount, Oops, invoice amount, which is going to be a number. And we're also going to have our invoice currency, which is going to be text. And we'll create that. Okay, so now what we can do is go back to design and we're going to give this output group a type of invoice. And now we're going to add in some text. And the text here is going to be uh, invoice um, amount. And the data is going to be parent groups invoice and it's going to be invoice amount. And then we are going to copy this. Actually, one thing I'm going to do before I copy it, I'm going to add in a little bit of styling in here. Um, again, not the best practices to do it like this, but for this uh, application, it's going to work. So this is some BB code, just as you can see here to make the invoice amount bold. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of spacing to this and then I'm going to copy this, paste it. And this is going to be uh, invoice number, and this is obviously going to change here as well to be invoice number. And then lastly, we are going to have invoice currency. Yep, and we'll change this as well to invoice currency. Okay, so we are almost there. We just need to add a few bits of code or no code in order to make it work. So um, the first thing we want to do is uh, this go button, we are going to make that do something. So I'm not going to add any checks. So really, this go button should only be able to be pressed when there is a file uploaded. But again, we're not going to worry about that in this tutorial. We're just going to go into the go. And we're going to say as soon as it's pressed, we're going to change the state, state set the state of the content group. The state is going to be loading. And I'm just going to double check that is what I called it. So I can click on the waiting group. Um, oh, okay, I didn't change these. So let me change these to loading. And then the output group needs to be output. Okay, now I can go back over to this button and it was loading, so that's fine. So that's gonna to change to loading. And then this is where we're going to call our API, which is connected to the NA10 webhook, which is gonna do the thing. So we're gonna NA10, extract from PDF. And here we can see we've got to pass in the uh, URL of the PDF. So I am gonna go and I'm gonna click on 
uh, what's it called, file uploader. Yeah, there we go, file uploader A. And we're going to say is value. Um, and we're going to put in URL as well. There we go. Okay, so the reason that we are setting state to loading before this is that um, this is going to take a couple of seconds to complete. And before we want to start it running, we want to say the whole process is loading. Hopefully that makes sense. So after it is completed, what we want to do is we want to create, create, create a new thing. There we go. We've got it in the end. Uh, create an invoice. And we're going to set all the fields. And the file is going to be the uh, file uploader. It's value. The invoice amount is going to be from step number two. And you can see here, we can very nicely pull in that information um, from that API. So the amount is going to be the amount. The currency is going to be the currency. And the number, you may, you may have guessed it, is going to be the number. All right. And then we can uh, set the state of the element of content. And this is going to be uh, output. And then lastly, we need to, I'm going to put this just before step number four, um, display data in a group. And we are going to take the output group. And in that output group, we are going to put in uh, the invoice, which we just created. So the result of step number three. So let's see, let's press preview. And let's see if we've got a page that works. I'm sure there's going to be an issue somewhere. And we can see one already there. So why is this appearing? Let's have a little look. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, so for some reason this didn't change. We wanted this to be loading. So there we go, that is loading. Let's check output. Yep, that's still output. Okay, so let's go back over to the test page and let's see. Okay, that's now gone. So I'm now going to click to upload a file. I've uploaded my file, there it is. We're gonna click go and it's gonna load. It's gonna take probably a second or two, let's see. And the output, and there we go, we got it first time. Invoice amount, 1,000. Invoice number, 3,091, and invoice currency, euros. And if we find our invoice again, that is exactly uh, what is on the invoice. And again, this is just a tutorial. Um, you could really pull any information that you want from any document that you want. But hopefully this is keeping it nice and simple so you can see exactly how that process is going to work. And the nice thing about having it in JSON is that you can use that data within a database. And if we go back over to Bubble, we can see that within our database, if we go to App Data, if we go to invoices, we can see there that we have got that invoice within our database, which now we can do anything with. So hopefully this has been a useful video showing you how you can take unstructured data and turn it into structured data, put it into a database, which then you can do anything you like with, and how you can do that using Bubble and NA10 so that you've got an actual interface, which on Bubble you can deploy to the world just by clicking on uh, deploy. If you've liked this video, please do give it a like. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try and get back to you. If you want to see more videos like this, then do subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.